Hey, uh, welcome to another video. In today's episode, we are gonna cover the finished exhausts, the, f the fully welded exhaust, how I'm gonna mount them to the car, and the process of me doing that. So we're just gonna jump right in, I think, today, and get on with it. So for the first time now, you're gonna see that both sides are on, fully welded. The bits have been cut, the connecting pieces have been cut, both sides now. Um, the collectors are in place. Um, the single two and a half inch pipe is done up nice and tight, fully welded on the joins and the side pipes, or these the big side pipes at the moment, are in place, just blocked up there at the back, um, at the right well, the right location of where I want them to be. So there's a bit of clearance underneath the fiberglass all the way down the side and then you have to take my word for it, there's a bit of clearance at the back there. Not so much because I don't want them to stick out all the way down the side of the car. If you look down, down kind of wheel alignment, well, it might be a bad angle, but it is, it's as far in as it can go, and it's parallel. So that's the best I can hope for, and I'm pretty happy with it. So my idea of trying to hang it, um, originally was gonna go with the same way that I've hung the, the twin side pipes, when I had those in there. And then I opted out of that idea. And I went for concept of having, because the chassis frame rail is just here, runs all the way down the side. So now I've gone with the idea, of a through bolted through the chassis these 50 by 30 rubber cotton reel mounts anti-vibration mounts female both sides so i've bolted through the frame rail, like i said which is a 50 mil box section and gone into the top of this and there's three of them on there on there one there they're approximately 12 inches apart 300 mil and this is a 36 inch tube so you've got six inches in from the end there's one then one in the middle then one six inches from that end so i thought three because well i thought three because i could spread the weight out a bit more and the idea is to, to bend a bit of stainless plate up in to the bottom of the exhaust weld it on there so that i mean that was the concept and i've made a little bit of a headway so what i've done all around the car is i've fitted the three rubber mounts either side you can probably see them the other side if you look carefully um lined up the exhaust where i want them to be and then I've got some 50 mil wide um, stainless plate, which I'll show you. Okay, so this is a piece of 50 by five stainless. Now, what I did first was knocked up a bit of aluminium, um, just to try and get the idea of what the, um, the angle is gonna be. 10 mil hole, which goes up onto the rubber, um, what do you call them, cotton reel mounts, and then comes out, and this is the part which is gonna come up underneath the exhaust. It's relatively the same style as what the Cobra's got on it. But with the Cobra, this is pushing down on the cotton mount. And there's a plate underneath that. Any of you got AKs and you know what I'm talking about. But on mine, I didn't want to have that extra space because otherwise it'd be it'd definitely be the lowest point underneath the car. And I didn't want to go that way. So I've opted to bolt up to the rubber mount, as you've seen under the car. And by having three, I thought I would take out as much of the vibration and chance of these to pull the rubber down as possible. The exhausts aren't very heavy and the front end is pretty solidly held in place from the headers. So this was the first iteration was just to bend a bit of that up and offer it. And it seems that all the angles are slightly different as it makes, as it changes going forward up the car. Standard, nothing on this car seems to be um, easy. So then what I've done here is I borrowed a bender, which was uh, what made it a lot easier. I actually ended up screwing it to the desk or to the bench because even with clamps on it was uh it was starting to move when i was went in and, and giving it the good old bend so anyway i digress i was happy with the length that this was how it touched up underneath the exhaust silencer so i transferred it to this i went with 50 mil wide purely because the um, rubber mounts are 50 mil wide so there's no reason to have any less and there's no reason to go any wider um, described uh, an arc there was the shape of the rubber mount shaved it off with the grinder um, and then this one was bent for the middle section of the left hand side one so I'm going to show you underneath the car so I've put the rear most oh, I put the rear most one on and the angle's a bit but it is parallel to the car and you'll see now how it's going to come up underneath the exhaust so I will tack a couple of tacks on when I'm happy with all of them in place and then get them fully welded. So at the moment, you can see it's a little bit low because the whole weight is just on that. And there's obviously a little bit of give in the rubber. 
So when I put the second one on, it stays pretty much where I want it. I haven't even got around to making the third one yet. So that's the process I'm doing now, is just knocking up these. But each, each one I come down with the aluminium plate, give it a bit of a bend to get to the angle that I want with this in the right spot, and then custom bend each one of these after I've cut it, drilled it, and shaped the end. So yeah, I'll work my way around. Unfortunately, with the piece of bar that I've got, I got a meter's length of it, um, assuming, uh, there we go, there's the first mistake, that I would get six pieces out of that, but I think I'm only going to get um, four, if maybe five. So, you know, but hey-ho. Uh, if I can get one whole side, which is three done, then I'm happy with that, and I'll just get another piece and um, work on the other side. Right, so just cut another one. This is the third one, obviously just marked it off of this. I drew the um, the radius on this from one of the rubber uh, mounts and now I don't bother, I just draw around it. So I line it up approximately with a with a piece up at the end, um, mark the hole, mark the center, punch the center, and then um, drill that through up to 10 mil. And then once that's, I line that up with a drill piece and then just draw around, um, draw around it like that and then just um, trim it off with a cutting disc and then just use a paddle wheel to, or the flap disc, whatever you're gonna call it, to round it, smooth it, take the edges off. It's pretty warm still. Um, I scribe down, uh, yeah, pretty much lined up, scribe down where the bend is and all of them so the bend's the same. Um, and now we'll go to the bender. If I give you, so I'll put this in here, line it up with the edge. Oh, it's a bit warm there still. Line that up with there. I'll do it properly but either way so this is an off-centered pin so that locks it there but if I had a thicker piece I can lift this whole unit up turn it and use it because it's off-center it's on my, it's on a cam as well so it's down that's just there you go. because there's no those resistance so I can keep going keep turning it for even thicker pieces and then as you bring this down it locks it because it's off center like I said so yeah, that's that. I'll put that back into place. Line this up with where I want it. And then it's literally a case of put, put the, um, the bending arm all the way up, all the way away from you so it's in line. And then you just wind this piece. Once it's in there properly, you wind this piece down. So you're winding it away now. So it presses flat on the metal. And then once that's flat on metal, give it a good old bend and it bends around. Um, so I'll just get this rigged up again how it's supposed to be and I'll show you as I bend it. Right, so I set that back to the, um, the side of the lobe that I was using. That's now locked in nice and tight. This is lined up with the dotted line that I made and this has been wound up. So I'll wind it away, wound up nice and tight. So that's up against it. There's just the adjustment on the back. And then now, what I will be doing before I bend it, actually, is I will... Take the aluminium test piece, I bend it a little bit flatter than it needs to be, go underneath the car, offer it up for this particular one, and then see how it fits and give it a bit more of a manipulation by hand. And once I'm happy with that, then I set this, I just put it in the top there. So when as I'm bending it, I know where I'm approximately right. And obviously there's a little bit of spring back once we've bent it. Um, yeah, to get it right. And that's what I'll be doing. Right, so I've just pinned under the car and I've bent this um, to the approximate shape uh, of where the exhaust needs to be so i'll just put it in here there's no real finesse to it grab hold of this handle at the end and then give it a bend to get approximately there a touch more and you'll see that's pretty much the same and i'll take it out and i will offer it up and if it needs to go a little bit further and I can do that. I'd rather have to go a little bit further than have to come back on it because it's, it's harder to straighten something you've just bent. Right, so I've just put, uh, put in all three and you can see, oh, actually it looks quite nice from that angle. So that's the plan. Um, oh, there you go, I've got some focus. So you can see the rubber um, cotton reel mounts and with the bolts that hold go through the middle of those, um, that's the dead center of the frame, of the outside of the frame rail of the vehicle. Um, so here we go, I think it looks, looks all right. So they're pretty much just over sort of center line. So what I'll do is I'll clean up around the edges of the um, 50 mil wide plate, grind some angles on it, 
and then put some tacks on the way down once I'm happy. I might take the exhaust off, run a, a line right down the middle so I know it's it's centered. But to be honest, they are gonna to touch where they touch and each side's gonna be individual. So I don't think there's really a point to that. Um, and all the angles are individual, although it look relatively similar now, but um, it's not. So there's a space all the way down. If you look down the inside, uh, it's hard to tell with that angle, but yeah, so there's there's more space. Oh, get my hand in there. This way, than there is at the top, especially the front part. Um, but there is quite a lot. Hang on, quite a lot of of movement allowed on the rubber mounts. So any vibration on startup, and there's not a whole length of exhaust. So yeah, it count for any of that. Um, and the eagle eyed of you have seen that I've got my 90 degree tips. I've got another set of V-bands. I will use V-bands just so I can actually orientate the tips where I need them. Um, and that gives me, when I take it off, gives me access straight down the inside if I need to um, put any kind of reducers in for track days. And I've mentioned that loads of times. So I will be gutting this back as far as I can before it starts to bend. Uh, and I'll work out where it needs to be and then cut this short enough that the V-band um, two sections can be welded on and it not interfere with this. But because of the depth, it actually wouldn't interfere anyway. But yeah, that's the uh, that's the plan. And then um, that's the last really uh, sort of structural work on the exhaust. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to reuse the sort of gaskets, exhaust gaskets that I made. I know they're, well, I mean, with the uh, carbon is that's whichever side it is that could basically aid to port match the actual heads but i will have some form of gasket because at the moment that is just the headers butted right up to it so i'll have to make something and seeing as i've already made these and the holes um, are in the right place i'll probably take these off put these on trim them all up to the right shape and then uh, fix it one final time and have those uh, those headers on there Oh, actually, before I do that, just thinking, I need to have the um, retaining pieces. Let me get one. And as if by magic, I've got one. So these, which are what are going to hold the headers into the collectors because they are actually all individual now. Um, not that they're going to go anywhere, but also I think they look quite cool. So if I just rest that one about there, I'll have two on the top. And I'll do two underneath. So yeah, these these plates will just be just rear of the swage part, um, completely vertical. I can do a couple of tacks on there. Um, yeah, I think they'll look pretty cool. I mean, no rush to do those, but uh, I want to make sure that the thing runs uh, runs quiet or quiet, uh, shall we say? So there'll be more to follow on that video. But uh, yeah, I'm going to um, jump off the video now get these bits done, make the other side, um, potentially get these up um, and then give you some footage as I do that. So this video is not crazy long, um, but it covers everything. And then hopefully by the end of the video, it'll be wrapping up, having the exhaust mounted, and then I can start playing with noise and the rear windscreen. I've got a lot to show you about the rear windscreen. So that'll be another video um, coming soon. Oh, actually it might be out before you see this. Anyway, cool, I'm gonna carry on. I think I've um, I've skipped a little bit in the uh, in the videoing, which I do apologise for. I lost track because I've been splitting my time between the rear windscreen, uh, which is a separate video, hopefully. Um, so you'll see here I'm pointing at the uh, the brackets, which or the mounts which will hold uh, the side pipe. The other side's on. Uh, the only difference from what I've talked about uh, in earlier this video, I'm assuming, is that I've um, upgraded from these, which are the 30 by 50 mil um, rubber. So sort of cotton rail bushings, whatever you call them, uh, anti-vibration mounts. Um, I've upgraded those to 40, oh, sorry, 40 deep by 70. There's just a lot more, um, well, a lot more sturdy. Because when I first put the other side on, having just finished this with the, uh, the smaller ones, the rearmost ones were sagging a bit more. So rather than having to... Um, well, I'll see my fingers away to bend these up at a slightly different angle to account for the the more sag at the back. 
Um, I left it for a few days, came and looked at it. I just, I didn't like the idea of having that much sag immediately um, with these. I thought over a short period of time or over a long period of time, certainly there'll be maybe too much give and the bounce around a bit. And I, you know, I don't want to have those issues. So bit the bullet, um, got some bigger ones. I was worried about, you know, the, the depth off the bottom of the car. But um, I mean, put that stick down, 45 mil total, the bolts in the bottom. Um, no further than the sump and the uh, front of the steering rack, so, um, I think, yeah, the frame that mounts the steering rack on there. So in general, not too bad. Um, I'll just put it on the other side and I'll show you um, one that's put on. It's not welded yet, but it's on. Okay, so the car is on the jack, which is why it's sitting really low this side, the other side's up. But that is, let me go under there, that is the uh, 40 by 70 mils I just talked about on and that's the exhaust just resting it's underneath just resting on those bits ready to be tacked on and i'm happy with, if you look down the lineup i'm happy with the lineup there and i'm happy with how it sits so yeah that's what i'll be moving forward with and it's been some time not in the video but in real life and now i'm going to show you the exhausts that are finished so you'll see the welds all the way down the rubber blocks are still the um, the larger ones, which I put on earlier in the video, and it's now on and mounted. It is solid, rock solid. Um, obviously, the rubber will take vibrations away. The ends are done. The V-bands, I've left this loose so you can actually twist it to where you want it before I do it up. It doesn't bind or interfere until it's right pointed in, which you wouldn't anyway. So I would imagine I'll most probably have them pointed in and under for uh, IVA noise. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with the lineup, how it looks, how it sits. As much tucked away underneath as I could. It's hard to show you if it's on the focus, but there's a gap all the way down, as small as I could make it, um, but obviously big enough to, to not bind what you to fear. So yeah, I'm really happy with that one. And I'll just show you the other side. And there is the driver's side, right hand side. So you'll see again, all the welds are done, the way down, mounted nice and tight. There is a gap, I can't really see where the camera's pointing. There's a gap down the inside, there's a nice little gap on the top, and the end is done, and that end is pointing right in underneath. So, yeah, this brings, oh well, I'd say this brings the exhaust to a close. This brings the fabrication of this part of it to a close. I need to have some proper um, sound testing equipment to actually see where we're at. Um, the, the bonus, which I think I mentioned earlier, about having the V-band, sorry, the V-band there, is that I can just take those off and have clear access right down the inside of that to put the decibel um, reducing inserts if needed. Uh, obviously I can't get to the packing of this um, silencer, but again, I can, get to the core uh, of the tube to do what's needed if anything is needed. So yeah, I'm gonna leave this video here. It's, um, well, it's 2022 now, so happy new year. And I know I started, well, you started watching probably 23 minutes ago and I started doing this, what feels like a lifetime ago. So there we go, exhaust system. Hell of a change from what was on there. And I'm pretty happy with what I managed to, through blood, sweat and tears, uh, turn out.